Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, highlighted that Bahraini citizens, through their patriotic efforts, continue to play a vital role contributing to the kingdom's comprehensive development, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, further highlighted that International Volunteer Day provides an opportunity for all to recall the noble efforts of the kingdom's citizens who, through their volunteering, have upheld the kingdom's stance and recognition globally. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister particularly commended the national efforts and response of the kingdom's volunteers working towards mitigating the spread of COVID-19, noting the large number of volunteers who have registered to support the kingdom's mitigation efforts. Moreover, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister emphasized that the efforts of every citizen and resident who has volunteered for Bahrain and for the sake of humanity will be remembered, as these efforts have supported the kingdom's comprehensive COVID-19 response. His Royal Highness said the Crown Prince and Prime Minister concluded by expressing his gratitude and appreciation to each and every one of Bahrain's volunteers for their noble contributions, which have further strengthened social solidarity among the kingdom's united community. Under the directives of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Honorary President of the Royal Equestrian Federation and Endurance Races, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and under the patronage of the President of Bahrain Royal Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the National Days Championship of the 11th Purebred Arabian Horses continues today at the Rashid Equestrian Club and Horse Racing in Rifa', which is organized by the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed optimism in the championship after the previous successes it has witnessed, highlighting the owner's keenness on or participating in such events and praising the distinguished organization of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation and their keenness to create an ideal atmosphere for all participants. For his part, His Highness the Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa expressed his appreciation for the outstanding efforts and the great support of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, stressing that the Federation was keen to implement His Highness's directives in the best way possible. He he added that this version is completely different from a technical point of view due to the level of maturity of the Bahraini owner and his ability to locally produce purebred Arabian horses, as well as owning a trained purebred Arabian horses that are able to compete in local and international championships in the presence of an elite experience exhibitor. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, affirmed uh, that Middle East security has been closely linked to global security for 70 years, noting that one of the reasons that prompted Bahrain to launch the Manama Dialogue more than a decade ago is its awareness that regional security can only be effectively addressed as an integral part of global security with the participation of decision makers from the region and the world. The Minister delivered a speech in which he highlighted the challenges facing the world, including the malign activities of some parties and the current unresolved crisis. He pointed out that as a result, the efforts today must completely focus on ensuring security and stability of the Middle East as an essential component of global security. He also pointed out the importance of signing the Abraham Accords and enhancing peace, stressing the need for friends and allies around the world to continue their strong support to Bahrain's efforts to promote peace, stability and prosperity in the region. Dr. Zayani also asserted the importance of finding a solution to the Palestinian Israeli conflict and the need to continue political, economic, commercial and diplomatic support for the border concept of a safe and interconnected region that enjoys peace and prosperity. The Minister of Foreign Affairs stated that the countries of the region need a flexible security deterrence policy complemented by the act of cyber, economic and diplomatic deterrence so that rivals know that they collectively have the means for an effective and proportional response to any attack. Earlier, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, attended the opening of the 16th Manama Dialogue. The Director General and Chief Executive of the International Institute for Strategic Studies, John Chipman, delivered a speech in which he welcomed the participants and commended the Kingdom of Bahrain for hosting such an important forum. The Secretary of State of the United States of America, Mike Pompeo, delivered a speech in which he thanked His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Government of Bahrain for hosting the forum, highlighting the role of the Kingdom in enhancing peace and security in the region and the world. 
world. He added that almost four years ago, President Donald Trump's administration saw that the real cause of the conflict in the Middle East was not the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but rather the presence of Daesh and the Iranian regime, which is the largest state sponsor of terrorism in the world. He stated that the U.S. has started its approach in the Middle East by leading the war against Daesh and its allies, achieving multilateral victory. As for the Islamic Republic of Iran, Secretary Pompeo affirmed that the United States of America views the Iranian regime as an anti-Western and anti-Semitic government that is terrorizing its people and its neighbors in the region, pointing out that sending money to the Iranian regime did not change Iran's behavior in the past, but rather encouraged its terrorist campaigns. He highlighted the achievements of the U.S. in the past periods as it withdrew from the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the JCPOA, which was trading money and immunity for the Iranian regime's malign behavior in exchange for unverifiable nuclear pledges that put everyone at risk. He asserted that with the help of allies in the Gulf region, the maximum pressure campaign had isolated Iran diplomatically, militarily and economically. He also indicated that the signing of the Abraham Accords in the White House in September would not have been possible without the campaign of maximum pressure and the active diplomacy of the United States of America. With its powerful allies in the region expressing his pride in meeting the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain and the State of Israel a few weeks ago, where the United States of America and the Kingdom of Bahrain and the State of Israel held their first uh, tripartite meeting. He also affirmed that more countries will follow suit in this regard, as it is the right decision for the benefit of their people. The Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Prince Faisal bin Farhan bin Abdullah Al Saud, arrived in the Kingdom of Bahrain to participate in the activities of the 16th session of the Manama Dialogue Conference. Upon his arrival, he was received by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, Assistant Minister of Foreign Affairs, Abdullah bin Faisal bin Jabal Al Dosri, and the, the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Prince Sultan bin Ahmed bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, as well as a number of officials in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, also met his Omani counterpart, Badr bin Hamad bin Hamoud Al Busaidi, on the sidelines of the 16th IISS Manama Dialogue. The two sides reviewed the strong brotherly relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and Oman, discussing ways to further develop them in various fields. They also discussed a number of issues of common concern. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, met the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriate Affairs of the sisterly Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan Ayman Safadi. On the occasion of his participation in the activities of the 16th session of the Manama Dialogue Conference. During the meeting, the strong fraternal relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan were emphasized, and the two brotherly countries' keenness to advance the framework for coordination and consultation between them on various issues in the service of common interests, in addition to discussing a number of issues of common interest. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, met with the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Levant Affairs and Special Envoy for Syria at uh, the Department of State of the United States of America, Joel Rayburn. The two sides reviewed cooperation between the two friendly countries and ways to enhance them in various fields. They also discussed security and political issues of common concern. The meeting was attended by the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for International Affairs, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and the Director of Americas and Pacific Affairs Director Ambassador Sheikh. Abdullah bin Ali Al Khalifa. From the American side, it was also attended by the President of the Chairman and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Export Import Bank of the United States, Kimberly Reed, the Charge de Affairs of the United States Embassy to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Margaret Nardi, and the accompanying delegation. The activities of the 16th Regional Security Summit Manama Dialogue 2020 continues for the second day with the participation of an elite group of experts, ministers and senior pol policy and security makers. The summit is witnessing lively discussions regarding top security challenges in the Middle East and proposing solutions and initiatives with the goal of overcoming them. A number of sessions were held on global governance in the aftermath of COVID-19 pandemic, in addition to a session on Middle East security in the global context, as well as a session with, which dealt with the topic of diplomatic cooperation after the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Bahrain's approval of the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine makes the kingdom the second country in the world to grant an emergency use authorization in EUA for the vaccine. The confirmation of approval by the National Health Regulatory Authority, the NHRA, of the Nahra of the Kingdom of Bahrain followed through analysis and review undertaken by the authority of all available data. It is Bahrain's second approval of a COVID-19 vaccine, EUA, following the kingdom's approval in November of the Sinopharm vaccine for use by frontline workers. Bahrain's comprehensive test, trace and treat COVID-19 response strategy with one of the highest testing rates per capita in the world has proved effective in breaking the chains of infection, managing down case numbers and saving lives. CEO of Nahra, Dr. Maryam al said the approval of the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine will add a further important layer to the kingdom's national COVID-19 response, which has strongly prioritized protecting the health of all citizens and residents during the pandemic. Pfizer Gulf cluster lead Lindsay Dutchy said today's emergency youth authorization in the Kingdom of Bahrain marks a historic moment in the fight against COVID-19. She added that this authorization is a goal everybody has been working towards and applauded Bahrain's National Health Regulatory Authority for their ability to conduct a careful assessment and take timely action to help protect the people of Bahrain. In line with the royal directives of His Majesty the King and in accordance with the decision of the coordinating committee headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, the Labour Fund Temkin announced the provision of business continuity support to sectors that have completely suspended their work as part of precautionary measures to limit the spread of the coronavirus for a period of three months, starting this December and for a period of three months until February 2021, as the sectors include entertainment, centres, wedding events and event halls and cinemas. The CEO of the Labour Fund, Dr. Ibrahim Mohamed Janahi, said that this step comes to unify national efforts to confront the repercussions of the global spread of the coronavirus and to provide the necessary liquidity for the private sector to deal with the effects of the pandemic in order to maintain sustainable growth. Dr. Janahi added that Tim Keen's contributions were also represented in expanding the circle of beneficiaries of the financial and economic package that was launched by supporting taxi and bus drivers, driving instructors and kindergarten workers. During that period, Temkin provided business continuity support to more than 16,000 small and micro enterprises. The excitement continues on the Bahrain International Circuit with the launch of the first event of the Formula One Rolex Sakhir Grand Prix 2020, which will continue until Sunday, the 6th of December, as the circuit will again be the focus of the world's attention during the next three days. The Formula One Rolex Sakhir Grand Prix will be launched in its 17th edition and the 16th round of the 2020 World Championship season on the outdoor tracks of more than three kilometers, where the races start for the first time on the external track. The Kingdom of Bahrain succeeded in hosting and organizing the Gulf Air Formula One prize race for the year 2020 during the exceptional circumstances of success that was the subject of great international praise that elevated the Kingdom's ability in organizing international events thanks to its readiness and good reputation in the field of organizing conferences and world championships. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 1,549 with 112 new recoveries and 167 registered new cases. 96 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 62 are contacts of active cases and 9 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to adhere to the rules and avoid public spaces when possible.